this black stuff I have in this vial? What's it look like, a liquid or a solid? It looks a lot like a liquid. How about when I hold up this um, magnet to it? Ah, it's starting to look a little bit different well, now. Well, it turns out that this material, um, the black stuff that's in this, this vial here, is called ferrofluid. And it actually has some of the properties of both liquid and a solid. It behaves like a liquid when we don't have a magnetic field um, next to it, but when we bring up a magnetic field, it starts having a much more solid-like behavior. And that's because it's made of tiny little particles. These are nanometer-sized particles of magnetite. Ferrofluid is a special material made of small nanometer-sized magnetic particles. And these magnetic particles are surrounded by a surfactant layer. Their surfactant is really slippery, and it makes the magnetic particles so that they can't touch each other directly, and they slide next to each other when there's a magnetic field around. So why don't we take a look at some of the ferrofluid that I have in the bottom of this fish tank. So there's a little puddle um, layer of ferrofluid down here. And what I'd like you to do is bring up one of these magnets underneath the puddle and see what happens. Ah, you can see those um, magnetic field lines again, and the ferrofluid moving around with the magnet. You can also um, think about um, making the uh, ferrofluid move to where you want it to go. So try taking this magnet and dragging the ferrofluid up the side of the fish tank. We can make the, uh, the uh, ferrofluid go wherever we want. There are a number of applications um, that uh, ferrofluid is used for because of these interesting properties of how it follows a magnetic field line and it starts to act a little bit differently um, somewhere in between a liquid and a solid when a magnetic field is present. So one example is um, for seals in rotating shafts. It's also used as uh, seals in computer disk hard drives so that it keeps the dust out. And it's used in loudspeakers to get better performance out of the loudspeakers. Another, another application that people are thinking about is biomedical. So you can take, instead of putting the slippery surfactant around there, you can make that surfactant actually have drugs in it. And the, the um, magnetite particles can carry those drugs to the site um, of a tumor in the body. So people are looking at the idea of whether or not you could use this to treat cancer, for instance. You could inject the ferrofluid into your body, and then you could use a magnet to drag it up to the location of a tumor so that you would be able to treat just in that location with the drugs and not have to take the, the, the drugs for in your whole body. So let's take a look at our leaping ferrofluid experiment. I have a little bit of ferrofluid down in the bottom of this watch glass, and I'm going to have you raise and lower the magnet um, and take a look at what happens. We'll see if we can make ferrofluid leap through the air. I have a magnet attached to the end of the string and inside the test tube. Watch what happens when I bring the magnet down close to the bottom of the test tube. It's coming close to the puddle of ferrofluid, and the ferrofluid leaps. So why do you think somebody would develop such a material with weird properties? Well, it turns out that NASA developed it in the 1960s in order to be able to control fluids in space. They wanted to be able to control the position of fluids, and they figured out that they could do this with ferrofluid using magnetic fields.